Counting down to the December employment report, which coming out at 8.30 Eastern time. Joining us now with more on the job market, Alan Gorino, Corn Ferry Vice Chairman. Alan, thanks for joining us this morning. Steve, how are you? Good to see you. I'm good. Let's talk about what's happening with wages. I think that's a big part of what we're looking for today. Um, we had the ADP wage insight data on yesterday, and it showed that things are coming down. Not only that, it's not paying as much anymore to leave a job as it is to stay at the same job. What's your take on what's happening broadly in the job market, but specifically when it comes to the wage component? Sure, Steve. Well, you know, the beauty of this topic is that it still parallels uh, what you talk about a lot, which is the economy and economics. Let's face it, we had significant wage growth over the last couple of years during the, the reopening for a whole bunch of reasons. We had the Great Recession. We had this this sense that there was a big piece of the economy uh, represented by people that, quote, didn't didn't want to work. So there, there was that whole buzz happening. And the reality was it was it was true. And so employers had to bid up wages to get people to work in what was a rapidly growing economy that had gone through a nosedive. So if you think about it, it's really a, a stabilization, right? If you think of, of wages as a reflection of supply and demand, we all know how that right. works, right? And then price is determined at the cross. So we have the, you know, meaningful demand right now. We have meaningful, meaningful supply, but still uh, looking at very low unemployment from a historical basis. And so the reality is that this, to me, is just sort of a normalization of, of what was a phenomenon of, let's say, explosive wage growth. So, Alan, your business is on the front line in terms of demand. Give us a feel for what your book looks like in terms of and what you're hearing from your clients. Are they pulling back from the uh, 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 searches that they had for, for executives and other positions uh, last year, or is a demand pretty constant? Yeah, well, you know, fortunately, we're we're 10,000 plus people in 60 countries. So what happens inside our firm is, you know, is, is just a microcosm of what's, you know, may or may not be directly reflected. What's what's important, I think, is what we're hearing from CEOs and other leaders. And, right. and we're all hearing it in the same uh, in the same dialogue around the market and the economy. I, I think right now we're, we're certainly not in a party economy, uh, but we're not at a funeral either. And so I think it's steady as you go. And I think that what we're going to see is maybe maybe this jobs market, jobs report data over the next year is going to be a proxy for this thing that we're talking about called the soft landing. And look, we've all lived through uh, what is what is not a soft job market uh, situation yeah. where literally job uh, opportunity marketplace fell off a cliff. I can think of at least two or three previous cycles over 25 years where we all know what that looks like. This doesn't feel like that. I'm pretty optimistic. And by the way, as a free marketer and a person that's, you know, looked at trying to understand the economy as it is over the last year, it's been perplexing, right? It's it's defying a lot of gravity. But the reality is maybe indeed this is reflective of a, of, of a soft landing. Job uh, job growth will continue, but, but not at a, a skyrocketing pace. Numbers like we've seen in the last, you know, few months, the 190s and right. so on. Right. I'll tell you my concern, which I don't know how to look at this in terms of data, but I've seen this behavior before, which is this notion of labor hoarding, that it was such a hassle to hire people that even when sales were to come off, you're not willing to let people go the way you would normally adjust your headcount to revenue or profits, and that suddenly a dam breaks and all of a sudden we have all this unemployment. Do you have any visibility into this question as to whether or not companies are holding on to people because of what a hassle it was to hire them in the first place? Steve, lo love the question. I, I actually, I've seen it myself uh, twice. I've been in this business a little longer yeah. uh, than, 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 than some, so I have seen it. Honestly, I, the, counteract, the counterbalance to that is we have a massive skills shortage in the world. And so when in previous years, quite frankly, hiring is more fungible. You know, it was easier to find great people 15 years ago or 10 years ago than it is today relative to the demands of jobs. So I don't think we're going to see anything like that again. Right. I think that if you look at the data for at least the next decade or more, depending upon how AI helps ease some of this pressure, we have a massive skill shortage across the world. There are more jobs than there are people who can fill them. And I think that will be 
you know, if you think the of the story. job market as a free market, a, mod a moderator. All right, Alan, hang on, because I just want to show Becky. We, she asked yesterday about the wage data yeah. from ADP, so we made a couple of charts for you. Ah, thank you, Steve. So here you go. Here's the, here's the charts that I should have had available yesterday because I knew this was going to come up. I had a nice chat with Neil Richardson. Here we go. We're looking, uh, Alan, I don't know if you can see it there, at the percentage change in year-over-year -year wages for job stayers versus job changers. And sure. I look at that chart, and what I see, Becky, you tell me what you see, mm -hmm. it was a massive premium in the midst of the pandemic to change jobs. Yeah. Clearly. You got a big, big raise that was up near the double digits. Mac is looking at it, it said, a darn, why didn't I go then? 16%. But now, that was huge. Now that premium has now gotten to be smaller, where the change... Although, I'm, I'm surprised that it's still 8% versus... 3% or whatever we're looking at on the it's chart. It's still 8%. So, Alan, do you want to talk to this chart? I'm hoping you can see it here. I probably should have sent it to you ahead of time. That that it's not quite as, as lucrative now. It's still lucrative. It's a, a lot better than it was right. before January 2020. That's true, but not as lucrative as it was. Alan, you're on the front line of this. Talk, talk to us about it. Right. Well, lo love, to, love the last-minute chart, but I, I, I didn't get a chance to figure it out in the last 20 seconds. It, it looks to me like a classic reversion to the mean. Right. And so if you look at where we're going, uh, you're going to get a moderate increase, which we always have to change jobs and go to a new company. However, we're not going to get that major delta that we had between the the uh, the bid and the ask at, at staying where you are versus going to someplace new. And I, again, I still think that's also reflective of the fact that, you know, we, we had a significant jump. You know, the old saying, uh, 50% of a number that's twice as large as it was two years ago is still at, a, at the quantum a fairly sizable number. So uh, people got big raises, and now they're getting what looks to be smaller raises on a percentage basis. But I bet if we looked at the dollar amounts, there's still meaningful dollars yeah. in making changes.